This faith and finance podcast is underwritten in part by Eventide Investments. They believe that investing is more than just returns. It's an opportunity to partner with companies that align with your values and are making a positive difference in the world. Learn more at eventideinvestments.com. It's a brand new year, and that's always a great time to make changes, and we're excited to tell you about some big ones we're making. Hi, I'm Rob West. We're strengthening the way we express the Christian worldview of faith and finances to be better used by God to advance His kingdom. I'll talk about that with Chad Clark today, and then it's on to your calls at 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. This is, are you ready? Faith and Finance, Biblical Wisdom for Your Stewardship Journey. Well, Chad Clark is our Executive Director, and he's busting at the seams to tell you about the changes we're making, not the least of which is a new name for the program and our ministry. Chad, welcome to Faith and Finance. Oh, man, I've been looking forward to this one. I want you to share more about this name change, but let me take a step back, provide some context perhaps first. You know, as we evaluated the ministry, we've, of course, seen a lot of changes in the last several years as we've expanded beyond radio into a full full-fledged financial ministry where we not only do this program, Faith and Finance, every day, but we're able to feature the best articles, podcasts, and videos on biblical finance on our website. We, of course, have a world-class money management app, a community of stewards asking questions and helping each other every day. We're also connecting people with coaches and certified kingdom advisors. And as we looked at all of these different areas that God has called us to serve in, we realized that we need a name that communicated that this ministry was about much more than just being wise with money. And that really takes us to this change, doesn't it, Chad? That's right. And we still want God's wisdom in our financial decisions, uh, but there are several other secular organizations out there using the name Money Wise. And people, people often confused us with those other organizations. So we felt led to evaluate a different way to express what our organization is really about. And it came down to helping people live out their faith and their financial decisions. And so from this, Faith Fi and Faith and Finance were born. Yeah, it's exactly right. The radio show, of course, called Faith and Finance and the ministry, Faith Fi, which is really a, a combination of those two words. Tell us about the vision for Faith Fi, Jen. Yeah, our, our vision is we really want to see people's faith in Christ be the foundation for their financial decisions. And that was the heart behind Money Wise as well. But we're really excited to more fully express this vision through FaithFi. We want our faith and God's word to always be the starting point and the foundation for our financial decisions. And when we do that, it really comes down to surrender and recognizing God's ownership and authority in every area of our lives. But as it relates to this topic, our finances, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'd like to just take a look at the story of the rich young ruler, for instance. He followed the law, he loved God, and he did everything right. And I'm using air quotes there. Uh, he was willing to give God parts and pieces of his life, but not all of it, specifically his money, which was an idol in his heart. Now, Jesus knew it wasn't about the money, but a matter of the heart. And as Jesus so masterfully does, he made it clear what this man had put his faith in. Yeah, so the question really becomes one of faith. Do we entrust our whole lives, including our finances, to God? And ultimately, what are we putting our faith in? I, I think that's a key question. What are we putting our faith in? Scripture clearly points out that money is a chief competitor with God for our hearts. Uh, Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think this heart issue is one reason the Bible talks so much about money, because our hearts have a tendency to idolize it. We may be drawn to putting our faith in our bank accounts, our possessions, and money. When we do this, it's no wonder why we feel stressed and anxious, because these things will ultimately be destroyed by moth and rust or uh, the stock market or inflation. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. So our name change really reflects this idea that it's not just about being more wise with money. That's important. But the starting point is understanding that we have to begin at the heart level, allowing our faith to inform our money management. And God has always been about our hearts. And I believe money management is really the training ground of the heart. The way we handle money is the most tangible evidence of what's important to us. And we work out our values and our priorities there first, I believe, as a Christ follower. So the goal ultimately is to say that this financial journey is one of the key ways that God shapes our spiritual journey. And of course, the how-tos come from God's Word. We take our cues from the Bible, not this world, so we can have an eternal perspective. So we'll tell you much more about this just around the corner. Chad Clark joins us on our same program with a new name, Faith and Finance. Then on to your calls at 800-525-7000. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break. We are grateful for support from LightPoint Portfolios, which seeks out family and faith-friendly investments for 401k and 403b plans, integrating faith values and fiduciary duty. LightPoint Portfolios offers retirement plans for a variety of organizations such as businesses, nonprofits, and churches. And we're grateful for their sponsorship of the Faith and Finance Program. More information is available at lightpointportfolios.com. We're grateful for support from Eventide Investments on the Faith and Finance Program. Eventide's approach to values-based investing is grounded in the belief that humankind was created in the image of God with intrinsic dignity, value, and worth. Eventide calls this investing that makes the world rejoice. More information is available at eventideinvestments.com. That's eventideinvestments.com. Thanks for joining us on Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West, and we have a brand new name for a new year as we rebrand and reposition the ministry around the intersection of faith and finance, recognizing it's our faith and our values as believers that should inform our financial decisions. God owns it all, and we're stewards or managers of His resources. Money, then, is a tool to accomplish His purposes, and we're excited that our new ministry name, we think, reflects that better than ever. Joining us in this segment of the broadcast, Chad Clark, Executive Director of FaithFi. And Chad, we were talking just before the break around what it means to truly entrust our whole lives to the Lord, allowing Him to serve as Lord of our lives, but also including this area of finance. And it really comes down to this big idea of whose kingdom are we after? Absolutely. Uh, Often we're trying to build our kingdom. And when that doesn't go as planned, the market drops, inflation, unexpected events, well, of course, we'll be anxious and disappointed. But Matthew 6.33 tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's his kingdom, his righteousness, not ours. And when we do all the things we worry about, all the things we're anxious about, God will take care of because he is good and trustworthy. And he ultimately knows what we need. We're more valuable to him than the birds of the air and the grass of the field, uh, which he takes care of as well. So we aren't to live in fear and anxiety, but to live in the freedom and victory of Christ through faith. So once again, it has to start with faith and seeking his kingdom. Yeah, I think that's right. And then we move on to this idea that there's really three areas that we need to surrender and grow in. We need to learn, we need to manage, and then we need to connect. So let's talk about each of these, Chad, and how FaithFi in particular helps in each one of these areas. Perhaps we'll start with learn. And as we stated earlier, FaithFi has a number of resources to help people learn what the Bible says about money, uh, from the Faith and Finance show to our website and app. We have a host of resources uh, for folks to learn on their stewardship journey. Why is this such a critical starting place? Well, here at FaithFi, we believe that learning is really foundational. When we spend time with God and we are actively in His Word, we are positioning our hearts to be drawn to Him. Here at FaithFi, we want to specifically highlight what the Bible says around money and possessions. And there's a lot to cover. 
Over 2,300 verses and a good majority of Jesus' teachings were around money and possessions. So we'd miss a good bit of God's word if we don't spend time learning what he says specifically about money and its role in our relationship with him. Yeah, let's get a little more specific. Uh, When we talk about learning, what resources are we talking about? Well, like you mentioned before, we have articles, podcasts, videos on our site. And in our app that cover a variety of topics from a biblical perspective, whether you're looking to get out of debt, save, prepare for retirement, be more generous, or leave a legacy, there are lots of topics. But regardless of your life stage, our goal is is that we have a growing library of highly curated content to give you a biblical perspective on various financial topics. Yeah, and this is critical. Obviously, there's a lot of worldly advice related to money out there. And not that it's all bad per se, but like we said earlier, it's really not about the money at all. It begins with our hearts and our commitment to Christ and his lordship over our lives. And that certainly includes our financial decisions. So through our content library, we bring a wholly different perspective, a biblical perspective to common and uncommon financial topics so our listeners can grow in wisdom and knowledge every day by not only this program, but our website at faithfi.com and uh, the FaithFi app. And again, that's FaithFi with an F-I. Now, Chad, learning is really foundational and it's a daily activity, but we can't stop there. We actually need to apply what we're seeing in God's Word in our daily financial rhythms, and that's where the management piece comes in. So tell us how FaithFi helps people better manage their finances. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. We can't just stop at learning. We must also apply what we learn and live out our faith in our financial decisions every day. Our team has built a really incredible money management tool where you can connect your bank accounts, track and plan your spending, and really just become more aware of your daily financial decisions. It's a new year, and a lot of people are looking to start the year strong and develop good money management habits. And if that's you, we'd love for you to check out the FaithFi app. Yeah, absolutely. And we're hearing from so many folks that are loving the app. They're using it to manage their money. We hear the stories about how it's helping them make better decisions, many of them communicating better with their spouses as they now are on the same page with regard to managing their money throughout the month. And it's really bringing to light where their heart and priorities are so they can make changes. That's right. And our goal with the app is not to make you a good accountant. We love our accountant friends listening, but that's not the goal. In fact, the FaithFi app takes a lot of the hard accounting work away for you. The money management features of the FaithFi app are really all about decisions. If we aren't aware of our financial situation and monitoring our daily activities, we can't really make good decisions. So for those of you out there hesitant to get on a budget, it's not really about that at all. It's about awareness and intentionality around our finances. So we'd love for people to check out the money management features in the FaithFi app and join a growing group of individuals who are using it to make better financial decisions every day. Yeah, that's right. You'll find it in your app store. Just search for FaithFi. That's Faith F-I. All right. So we know it's important to learn what God's Word says about money and to apply what we learn as we manage money and make decisions. Let's now talk about the final element, Chad, and that is the importance of community. Yeah, community is really what we're all about here at FaithFi. Uh, Rob, you take calls every weekday with listeners all around the country, and we have listeners all around the world that are part of our community. We also have our app users who are actively asking questions and helping each other in our online discussion forums. Um, Not only that, but we connect people with financial professionals, whether that be a financial coach or a certified kingdom advisor. We really want to see a community of stewards who are committed to living out their faith and their finances. Uh, If you listen to the show, go to the website or sign up for our app. We want you to know that you are not alone, but you are part of this movement, and we look forward to serving you on your stewardship journey. Yeah. We talk about this stewardship journey, Chad, and it really is a journey. It's not a destination we arrive at, but it's something that happens throughout our entire lives, right? That's right. It's not just something that we learn how to manage money uh, according to biblical principles. This is a lifelong journey where we're constantly learning. We're constantly turning back to God's word to ensure that our hearts are postured towards him and that our financial decisions ultimately glorify him at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, You mentioned that the first of the year is a great time to get started with a money management app. Uh, Why in particular do you think so many people are looking toward that in January? Well, January's 
it's probably one of the best uh, times to get started in a money management app because you're starting fresh. You got a clean slate. You don't necessarily need to bring a lot of transactions into the system. Um, we're January 2nd here. So uh, you, you're only one day late if you're downloading the FaithFi app. And so uh, we encourage you to uh, check it out, get started. Um, and we've got an incredible support team. One of the things that we really value here at FaithFi is the support that we provide. So if you have questions, reach out to us. We're here to help you be successful again in using the FaithFi app. All right. So it's the same ministry. It's the same heart behind it. It's just a new name, FaithFi. That's Faith, F-I, and a new name for the radio program, Faith and Finance. We're so excited about serving you with new and exciting opportunities in the days ahead as you continue on this stewardship journey, not only to learn and not only to manage, but also in community. And that's part of what we do here on this program every day. All right, we're going to be turning our attention to your questions. What's on your mind today? Financially speaking, I'd love to hear from you so we can talk about how you can move forward and apply God's wisdom to the choices and decisions you're making. The number to call, 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. We'll be right back on Faith and Finance. Absolutely free. We know you've learned to be suspicious of those words, but really, you can get biblical financial wisdom delivered to your inbox absolutely free. Articles, videos, podcasts, and special offers on biblical resources. More than 50,000 people receive our free weekly wisdom email, and you can too. Create your free faith and finance account. Just visit faithfi.com and click sign up. We are grateful for support from Praxis Mutual Funds. Praxis Mutual Funds has seven impact strategies that are designed to create positive real-world change. More information is available at PraxisMutualFunds.com. The fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses are contained in the prospectus and summary prospectus. This and other information is available at PraxisMutualFunds.com. Investments involve risk. Principal loss is possible. Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back to Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West. This is the program where the 2300 verses on money and possessions found in God's Word intersect with today's financial decisions and choices. The number to get in on the conversation, 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. Let's head to the phones, East Moline, East Moline, Illinois. Hi, Patty. What's on your mind? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Hey, uh, my husband and I are considering buying a vacation home in Florida. And first of all, we were wondering if we should do it. And if so, should we pay cash or pay part of it, you know, in cash and part finance? Um, He is retired. I don't work. I just care of my mom. And I'll probably start getting Social Security next year. And he also gets Social Security. Okay. And, And what are you all living off of besides his Social Security? Uh, his retirement. Okay. And is that a 401k that you're pulling income off of? Does he have a pension? What is it? Uh, he gets uh, the pension and then, uh, yeah, it would be 401k. And we would probably go to a few different places. I have some stocks and we would, okay. we have about, he was telling me about 750000 Okay. And, and how much would you be looking to spend for this uh, vacation home? It's 140. Okay, very good. Well, I think the the key is, you know, make sure that it fits into your overall plan. So if you all have ordered your financial life so that uh, you can live basically off of Social Security, uh, his pension, and then you'll be adding your Social Security, uh, then obviously you could take this and redirect a portion of it into Florida real estate. Now, the downside is it's highly appreciated right now. But, um, you know, if you have the ability to buy it and those are assets that you're not needing right now to live off of and you could enjoy that, um, maintain it, and then at some point sell it or move into it and sell your current residence, you know, I like the diversification that comes with that. I think the key is at what premium are you paying, um, you know, if any. Um, But apart from that, if you can take part of your assets that you're not relying on right now, especially as you were to 
take additional social security um, and redirect that, you know, I don't have any problem with it as long as it fits into your overall plan. And again, um, they're not making any more Florida real estate. Uh, so it's a great place to be invested, especially given the tax favored environment in that state and people uh, moving out of uh, states that are not uh, as tax advantaged. And so I think you'll continue to see uh, for based on real demand, an increase in, in South Florida or excuse me, in Florida real estate in general. Uh, so I'm, I'm on board if it fits into the overall plan, Patty, um, with this uh, idea. We appreciate you checking in with us today. Let's head back to the phones. Therese uh, is, if I'm saying that right, uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Trice, how can I help you? Um, I'm inheriting a house for, um, from my sister and brother-in-law who passed away 14 months ago. And we're going to sell it. And it, um, I'm just curious what I should do with it's probably going to be about $80,000 um, of inheritance money. And I didn't know since it's 14 years, since 14 months since they passed, if it's still in, considered an inheritance to me for my taxes and that, or, and if I should put it down on my mortgage or what I should do with it. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So this was uh, given to you as a part of the will and yeah. uh, it's just mm-hmm. taken this long for the probate process to occur. Is that right? Um, well, yeah, sort of. <laughs> it's, I'm part. I, um, my brothers and sisters are part of it with me, and we're just now deciding to sell the house. So, I see. So mm-hmm. the uh, the cost basis is going to be as of the date of death, and so okay. any increase since that time um, would obviously be considered uh, capital gains, and you're going to have to look at that. Um, okay. But beyond that, in terms of how you should handle these funds. I think you've just got to go back to looking at the priority use based on your current financial situation. Uh, tell me this. Do you have an emergency fund? And what about consumer debt that you have? Uh, the only debt I have is um, we have one car loan and our mortgage. Um, okay. And um, we have uh, an emergency fund. We have our um, our uh, IRAs and we have our um, retirement fund. We're looking like three years we're going to be retiring. So um, okay. the biggest that we have is the mortgage is 142,000 and my, my car has probably 30,000. Okay. And how many months worth of expenses do you say roughly you have in savings? Uh, Six months. Okay, great. And so you've obviously are living within your means. You're continuing to uh, put money toward retirement and you believe you're on track at this point uh, in terms of having the funds you need to maintain your lifestyle once you fully retire. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So I like the idea of, apart from any giving uh, you'd like to do out of this money, I love the idea of you accelerating that mortgage payoff. Because if you've uh, got debt under control and you're on track to get that continued to be paid down, uh, obviously we can get that car paid off. You've got six months of reserves. You feel like you're on track for your retirement savings. If we could go ahead and accelerate that home payoff so that when you retire, you're completely debt-free, including the house and the car, that just means your monthly lifestyle expense is even lower, which gives you even more freedom and flexibility because you don't need as much money in retirement, which is a great thing, and not to mention the peace of mind that comes from being completely unencumbered. So just based on the information I have, I'd proceed with paying that home mortgage down. Okay, perfect. Thank you. (laughs) All right. You're welcome. We appreciate your call today. Uh, Quickly to Franklin, Tennessee, a beautiful part of the country. Hi, Sherry. How can I help you? Hey, Rob. Yes, I am being forced to have to leave the job that I'm in right now, and I have a Roth IRA from a previous job that I transferred, I rolled over. But since I'm getting close to retirement age, my question is, do I need to continue to put money into the Roth IRA that I rolled over? I mean, the Roth IRA that we started out a year ago or put into the traditional IRA that I rolled over? Or do I need to put into both? Yeah. So uh, you're continuing to work. You just have, have a new employer. Is that right? Well, I'm trying to find another job because because of health issues, I've had to leave the job I'm on. 
I see. Okay, very good. Well, you know, I think the key is, as far as Social Security is concerned, they don't care how many jobs you have. And, uh, you know, they, really all that matters is that you contribute into the system and they're going to base your uh, Social Security uh, benefits based on your highest 35 years of earnings on your record. So any year that you earn higher than a previous uh, year among those highest 35, it's going to benefit you uh, over time. Uh, in terms of you know continuing to fund retirement, I would just be systematic in funding that account. And given that you're uh, fairly close to retirement, I'd probably opt for the traditional IRA, which gives you the current tax benefit as opposed to the Roth, which will um, you know typically is most advantaged when you have a long time to let that compound. Uh, stay on the line. We'll talk just a bit more off the air and make sure we get all your questions answered because we are out of time, but I appreciate your call. Thank you for stopping by today. Thank you for listening and being a part of the program. I want to say thank you to my team, Amy, Dan, and Jim Henry. Uh, thank you for being here. Come back and join us tomorrow, will you? I'll be here. We'll look for you then. God bless you. Bye-bye. Faith and Finance is provided by FaithFi and listeners like you.